All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right, staying strong and solid in these times that run. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he looks out for you, he comforts you. I pray that your mental health gets better and you have a peace of mind. I pray that you become more strong and wise in the Lord. And I just pray that you stop backsliding and turn from your ways and repent and constantly change and grow and improve in the Lord. And that you get, you ask the Lord for more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and that you just take it one day at a time. Yes, yes, y'all. Let us thank God for another day. Let us thank the Lord for having food in our belly, clothes on our back, a roof over our head. Let us thank the Lord for protecting us coming in and coming out. And let us just thank the Lord for giving us another chance, you know. So much going on in the world. Tomorrow's not promised. That's why we should not boast about tomorrow or, or brag about or worry about it. We take it one day at a time. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Every day is another day to get better with the Lord. Every day is a better day to get stronger with Christ. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome, everybody. Shalom, body of Christ. Greetings, family. What is going on with y'all? Thank you all for listening and supporting. I love you all so much. Welcome, 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 everybody. All tribes, all nations, all peoples, all tongues, all four corners of the earth, all faces, all races. Whether you're an Israelite or a Gentile, whether you are chosen or adopted, it is all right. Let us come together and praise the Lord. Let us gather let us fellowship. Let us uplift, uplift one another in the word. Let us encourage one another. Iron sharpens iron, correction, edification. Yes, yes, y'all. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's just praise the Lord and give him all the glory. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. Yeah. Let us love the Lord our God with all of our mind, heart, and soul. Let us love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Let us obey the gospel. Let us obey the law, as the commandments. Let us really stay aligned with the word. Let us do Father's business and Father's will for the rest of our lives until his son comes back. Let us keep our hands to the plow and keep working for the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is coming back like a thief in the night. He's coming back for a church with no spot, no blemish, no wrinkles. So let us be on point. Let us tighten up and let us do better every day. And let us serve the Lord with gladness and joy, a merry heart. All right, let us be focused and fixed on him. Let us be faithful, steadfast, and alert and sober. And let's just be on point, all right? Yes, yes, y'all. So today's message, I will continue the Bible reading series, all right? We left off at the book of Ezekiel chapter 29. Very powerful reading, amen? So we read Ezekiel chapter 1 all the way through 29 last night. So what we're going to do is read the book of Ezekiel chapter 30 and onward, all right? And then we'll close out with a prayer. We'll close out with the priestly blessing. And then we'll close out with giving the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all the praise, honor, and glory. And we're going to also praise his son who died for our sins, his only begotten son who died for our sins. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. All right. So let us go right into the book of Ezekiel chapter 30. Here we go. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus said the Lord God, how ye woe worth the day for the day is near even the day of the lord is near a cloudy day it shall be the time of the heathen and the sword shall come upon egypt and great pain shall be in ethiopia when the slain shall fall in egypt and they shall take away her multitude and her foundations shall be broken down ethiopia and libya and lydia and all the mingled people and chub and chub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword Thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down. From the tower of Syene shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her city shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. And they shall know that I am the Lord, when I have set a fire in Egypt, when all her helpers shall be destroyed." In that day shall, mess shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the, car the careless Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt. For lo, it cometh, thus saith the Lord God. I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land. And they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the lands with the slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked. And I will make the land waste and all that is therein. By the hand of strangers, I, the Lord, have spoken it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols and I will cause their images to cease out of Noph, out of Noph, <clears throat> excuse me, 
And there shall be no more prince of the land of Egypt. And I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. And I will make Pathros, Pathros desolate and will set fire in Zoan. And Zon, Zoan, and will execute judgments in Na, and No. And I will pour my fury upon Sin, the strength of Egypt, and I will cut off the multitude of No. And I will set fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain, and No shall be rent asunder, and Noph shall have distresses daily. The young men of Avon and of Pibeseth shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into the captivity. At Tehephenes, Tehephenes, also the day shall be darkened, when I shall break there the yokes of Egypt, and the pomp of her strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughter shall go into captivity. Thus will I execute judgments in Egypt, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed, to put a roller to bind it, to make it strong to hold the sword. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I will break his arms, the strong and that which was broken, and I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. And I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. And I will break Pharaoh's arms, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wound, wounded man. Mm. But I will strengthen the arms of the king Babylon, the king of Babylon, and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and disperse them among the countries, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 30, reading. And again, the Lord is speaking through to, Isaiah, to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel is um, prophesizing once again also about Egypt, Ethiopia as well, and Babylon, all right? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 31, and continue. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And to his multitude, whom art thou like in thy greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon, with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud, and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick thong, thick boughs. The waters made him great, and the deep set him up on high, with her rivers running around about his plants, and sent thou her little rivers into all the trees of the field. Therefore his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied. And his branches became long because of the multitude of waters. When he shot forth, all the fowls of heaven made their nest in his boughs. And under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young. And under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness. And the length of his branches for his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs. And the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted up thyself in height, and he hath shot up his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I have therefore delivered him into the hand of the mighty one of the heathen. He shall surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness, and strangers, the terrible of the nations, have cut him off and have left him. Upon the mountains and in all the valleys, his branches are fallen, and his boughs are broken by all, by all the rivers of the land, and all the people of the earth are gone down from his shadow and have left him. Upon his ruins shall the fall shall the fowls of the heaven remain, and all the beasts of the field shall be upon his branches. To the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves for their height, neither shoot up their top among the thick boughs, neither their trees stand up in their height, all the all that drink water, for they are all delivered into death to the neither the other parts of the earth. In the midst of the children of men, with them that go down to the pit, 
Thus said the Lord God in the day when he went down to the grave, I caused the morning, I covered the deep for him, and I restrained the floods thereof, and the great waters were stayed, and I caused Lebanon, Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall, when I cast them down to hell with them that descended into the pit, and all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water shall be comforted, comforted in, in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with him unto them that be slain with the sword. And they that were his arm that dwell under his shadow in the midst of the heathen. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shall thou be brought down with the trees of Eden into the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitudes, saith the Lord God. So that's the book of Ezekiel chapter 31 reading. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 32, reading, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 32. Here we go. And it came to pass in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas. And thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, and fouledest Fouled, fouled us their rivers. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net over thee with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Then will I leave thee upon the land, I will cast thee forth upon the open field, and will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee, and I will fill the, be I will fill the beast of the whole earth with thee, and I will lay thy, sh thy flesh upon the mountains, and fill the valleys with thy height. I will also water with my with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains and the rivers that shall shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. I will also vex the hearts of many people. When I shall bring thy destruction among the nations, and to the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their king shall be horribly afraid for thee. And when I shall brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life, in the day of thy fall. Mm. For thus saith the Lord God, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. By the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall the terrible of the nations, all of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt, and all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof from beside the great waters, neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor the hoofs of beasts trouble them. Then will I make their waters deep, and cause their rivers to run like oil, saith the Lord God. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of that whereof it was full, when I shall smite all them that dwell therein, then shall they know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nation shall lament her. They shall lament for her, even for Egypt and for, and for all her multitude, said the Lord God. It came to pass also in the twelfth year, in the fifteenth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations unto the nether parts of the earth with them that go down into the pit. Whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her and all her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down, they lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. As her is there, and all her company, his graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. There is a lamb, and all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, Fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living, yet have they borne their shame when with them that go down to the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the slain, 
with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him and all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though their terror was caused in the land of the living. Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put in the midst of them that be slain. There is Meshesh to Baal and all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they cause their terror in the land of the living. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of this uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. And they have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquity shall be upon their bones. Mm. Though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living, yet thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, and shall lie with them that are slain with the sword. There is Edom, her kings and all her princes, which, which with their might are laid by them, that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised, and with them that go down to the pit. There be the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians, which are gone down with the slain. With their terror, they are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them, and shall be comforted over all his multitude. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword. Even Pharaoh and all his multitudes, saith the Lord God. That's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 32, reading. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, reading, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. Here we go. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the crowd, if he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, that whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from thee, from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he does not, if he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak it to the house of Israel, thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how shall we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the desert of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered, but for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say the way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his ways. 
And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, that one had one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, The city is smitten, is smitten. Now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the evening, afore he that was escaped came, and he had opened my mouth, and until he came to me in the morning, and my mouth was open, and I was no more dumb. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel, of Israel speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land, but we are many, the land is given us for inheritance. Wherefore, say unto, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Ye eat with the blood, and lift up your eyes toward your idols, and shed blood, and shall ye possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword, ye work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife, and shall ye possess the land? Say thou thus unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, As I live, surely they that are in the wastes shall fall by the sword. And him that is in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured. And they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. For I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of her strength shall cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am the Lord, when I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. Also thou, son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and the doors of the houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from the Lord, cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Mm. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do not, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. So that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, reading. Let us go into the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, reading, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. Here we go. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy, saying to them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of the Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe, clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd, and they become they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yeah, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, Surely because my flock become a prey and my flock become meat, became a meat, became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Mm. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Mm -hmm. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. Mm -hmm. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their full, how shall their fold be? There, sh there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture. Shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel? I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. Mm -hmm. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away. And I will bind up that which was broken, 
and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, and I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between the cattle, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Seemeth it is a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the diseased with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore I will save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd, and I the Lord will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, I the Lord have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them in the places round about my hill a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing and the tree of the field shall yield, shall yield her, fr her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase and they shall be safe in their land and shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them. And they and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. Mm. So book of Ezekiel chapter 34, reading right there. It's a very powerful chapter right there. It's describing the restoration of all the Israelites, basically, the lost sheep. We were all scattered and driven, and we will come back for the Lord. All right? The gathering of the Most High's people, the great awakening. We will come back. And the leaders of the flock will be men. God just declared that, all right? So it's going back to the patriarchy. The patriarch is going to go back to the male leadership, all right? Because the the man leaderships of the priest, the shepherds, the, uh, the judges, the high priest, the prophets, all that's been broken and scattered. So the Lord's going to bring it back. He's going to bring back the watchmen, the priest, all of that, man, all right? So it's Ezekiel 34 right there. He said the flock of his pastor are men. So, brothers, we got to get it together, all right? Men, we got to do better. So that was Ezekiel 34. Now let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 35, all right? The book of Ezekiel chapter 35, here we go. Oh, yeah, also, before we get to 35, uh, with Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 and onward, it's talking about searching for his sheep and seeking them out. It's kind of also related to Christ fulfilling that. When Christ went out and found his disciples, when he was, when he found Peter, John, James, and all of them, so um, that's very prophetic and beautiful right there. So Christ was fulfilling so much of Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, like all in one. You know what I'm saying? And it's just beautiful how the Lord seek out His people. You know how He went to those disciples and gathered them. And even in these last days, you know we're still being searched and seeked out wherever we're at. So you get those encounters with the Lord, those very powerful spiritual moments. Just know you're one of those pastors, one of those sheep that's been seeked out and searched. Amen. So let us embrace that and thank the Lord for that. All right. Very powerful and beautiful right there. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35. All right. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35. Here we go. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And say unto thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Excuse me. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be a desolate shall be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, 
and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee until blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it, from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men in thy hills and in thy valleys, and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thy anger, according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. Thus with your mouth, ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Thus said the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Idumea, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. That's the book of Ezekiel chapter 35 reading. So that's Ezekiel prophesizing against Mount Seir. All right, that recompension, that justice, that vengeance, all that in one, all right? Recompension, all right. That was the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36. Here we go. Ezekiel 36. Also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession to the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are in an and infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Excuse me. Thus said the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken, which become a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumea which have appointed my land unto their possession possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand, show the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will return, I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, and the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the waste it shall be builded, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yeah, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Thus said the Lord God, because they say unto you, Thou land devourest up men, and hast bereaved, my, bereaved thy nations. Therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave thy nations any more, said the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear thee in the shame of, of the heathen any more. Neither shall thy bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shall thou cause thy nations to fall any more, said the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Excuse me. Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land 
and for the idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And when they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and are gone forth out of this, out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not... I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you to your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Mm. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe them yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, said the Lord God, be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, of house, O house of Israel. Thus said the Lord God, in, that day, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded, and the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate, as it lay desolate in the sight of all that, that passed by. And they shall say, This land was desolate is become like the garden of Eden and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left around about you shall know that I, the Lord build the ruined places and plant that was, uh, plant that, that was desolate. I, the Lord have spoken it and will do it. Thus said the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's prophetic right there. That's powerful. Yes, yes. That's the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 reading. Yes, yes. He, Yes, he will. He will do it. He's spoken it. He will do it. Mm -hmm. The holy flock, the flock of Jerusalem for a solemn feast. The waste cities shall be filled with flocks of men, mm, and they shall know that I am the Lord. That's speaking right now. All these places that's going down the drain is still filled with Israelites and scattered people doing the Lord's will. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. That's some powerful stuff right there. I'm telling you, the book of Jeremiah, the book of Isaiah, the, the book of Ezekiel, man, it just really hits you. You know what I mean? It really does. You know? So that's the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 reading. Let us now go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, reading, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Here we go. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were, there were, men, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will, I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yes, yes. So I prophesied as I, as, I, as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones were coming. The bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above. 
but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of a man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Mm. And he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our, from our parts. Therefore, prophesy, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his compa companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another and to one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before thy eyes. And say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from one among the heathen, from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Mm. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all of their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they, shall all, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I gave unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Mm. Moreover, I will also make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yeah, I will be their God and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Mm. Woo. Ezekiel 37. That, that, boy, that make you smile right there. Yes, yes. The Lord will do it. He will perform it. He said it. Yes, yes. He ain't stutter. He said it. Yes, yes. His word don't go void, y'all. Israel, what's good? What's good, Israel? Yes, yes, y'all should be rejoicing right now hearing that. Shoot. We're not going to, this is going to be one people gathered in his sanctuary, his presence. So that speaks all on the end times, the glorification, the gathering. Um, it, it mentions David and the, the servant of David, just also referring to Christ as well. Since they, uh, Christ's kingship is of David, so it's referring to that as well. So we'll basically be glorified with Christ. Um, Yes, man, this is this is beautiful, man. Ezekiel thirty-seven, that made me smile right there. It brought up Ephraim and Joseph and Judah, Israel all together, man. The Lord, watch how the Lord revive us. Watch how He restore us. Watch it. I'm telling you, man, the Valley of Dry Bones, man. That's, that's such a powerful book, man. It's so powerful. It was just a valley of dry bones, and then the Lord put life back into them, and 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 then the Lord's gonna put life back into us, man. We've been so beat down and we've been so trodden and tired and feeling dead inside and feeling miserable and all that and droughts and struggle and lack. And watch how the Lord restore us, renew us and build us up, give us life again and put his spirit upon us. Man, he's going to put his spirit, his light, his love, his fire. He's going to put all that in us, man. 
We're going to be back on top, people. Israel. Yes, yes. Stand up, Israel. Hallelujah. Yes, y'all. So that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 reading. Whew. Man, man, man. That gets you hyped, don't it? Yes, y'all. Now we will go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. All right. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. Here we go. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, Gog, Gog the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech, and Tabal, and prophesies against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tabal. Excuse me. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed, cloth with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, with them, all of them, with shield and helmet, Gomer, and all his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee, be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days shall thou shalt be visited, in the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. Thou shalt ascend, and come like a storm." Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall be, it shall also come to pass that at the same time things, at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at the rest, that dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take a spoil and to take a prey to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which gave which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, art thou come to take a spoil? Has thou gathered thy company to take a prey? to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil. Therefore, son of man, prophesy, saying to Gog, Gog, thus saith the Lord God, in that day when my people of Israel dwell, dwell safely, shall thou not, not, shall thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out, out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against thy, my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in their latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time? Be my servants as the prophets of Israel. Be my servants the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them. And it shall come to pass that at the same time when Gog, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So that the fishes of the sea and the foes of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains. Set the Lord God, every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with his pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify thyself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Mm. That's the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 reading. I was referring to Magog, Gog, Magog, that nation. The Lord's fury and anger is towards them. The Lord going to set it off on them, all right? The Lord ain't playing with these enemies and these nations. He ain't playing with them. They're going to get theirs, all right? They're so prideful, haughty, and arrogant. They think they're going to get away with it. Nobody gets away with it, all right? All right, so that was Ezekiel 38. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 39, all right? The book of Ezekiel chapter 39, here we go. 
Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say thus, say thus at the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshish. Hold on. Okay, my bad. Hold on. Against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshish and Tabal. And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken this at the Lord God. And I will send a fire and on Magog, Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Mm -hmm. Behold, it is come and it is done, said the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. And they, shall, and they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and and the bucklers, the bows, and the arrows, and the hand staves, and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years, so that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forest. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoiled them, and rob those that robbed them, saith the Lord God. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog, a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Haman Gog, Haman Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord God. And they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth, to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, that shall he, then shall he set up a sign by it. To the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog, Haman Gog, and also the name of the city shall be Hamana, thus shall they cleanse the land. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field, assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bull bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat, eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken, of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war saith the Lord God, and I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen that shall shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them, so the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face upon them, and gave them into the hand of their enemies, so fell they all by the sword." According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and, and sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them into their own land and have left none of them any more, thee, any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, said the Lord God. 
Yes, yes, says the Lord God. Yes, yes, y'all. Powerful right there. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39, reading. It's just amazing how the Lord is going to handle all of our enemies, all these wicked nations, and how he's going to pour out his spirit, his love upon us and restore us and bring us back. That's so beautiful, man. He's going to bring us back whole and make us live again. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Too amazing. So that was the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39, reading. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 40, reading, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 40, here we go. In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year after the city, after that the city was smitten, smitten in the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. In the visions of God brought me he brought he me into the land of Israel, and set me upon a very high mountain, by which was as the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass, with a line of flax in his hand, and a measure and reed, and he stood in the gate. And a man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thy eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I sh shall show thee, for to the intent that I might show them, unto thee art thou brought hither, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel." And behold, a wall on, on the outside of the house round about, and the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long by the cubit of an hand breadth. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then came he into the gate, which looketh toward the east, and went up the stairs thereof, and measured the threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad, and, a, the, and the other threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad. And every little chamber was one reed long and one reed broad. And between the little chambers were the five were five cubits, and the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate within was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate within one reed. Then measured he the porch of the gate, eight cubits, and the post thereof, two cubits. And the porch of the gate was inward. And the little chambers of the gate eastward were three on this side and three on that side. They three were of one measure, and the post had one measure on this side and on that side. And he measured the breadth of the entry of the gate, ten cubits, and the length of the gate, thirteen cubits. The space also before the little chambers was one cubit on this side, and the space was on one cubit on that side. And the little chambers were six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. He measured then the gate from the roof of one little chamber to the roof of another. The breadth was five and twenty cubits, door against door. He made also posts of three score cubits, even unto the posts of the court round about the gate. And from the face of the gate of the entrance unto the face of the porch of the inner gate were fifty cubits. And there were narrow windows to the little chambers and to the post and to their post within the gate round about. And likewise the archers. The arches and windows were round about inward, and upon each post within were palm trees. Then brought then brought he me into the outward court, and lo, there were chambers, and a pavement made for the court round about. Thirty chambers were upon the pavement, and the pavement by the side of the gates over against the length of the gates was the lower pavement. Then he measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate unto the forefront of the inner court, without an hundred cubits eastward and northward. And the gate of the outward court that looked toward the north, he measured the length thereof and the breadth thereof. And the little chambers thereof were three on this side and three on that side. And the posts thereof and the arches thereof were after the measure of the first gate. The length thereof was 50 cubits and the breadth of five and 20 cubits. And their windows and their arches and their palm trees were after the measure of the gate that looketh toward the east. And they went up into by seven steps, and the arches thereof were before them. And the gate of the inner court was over against the gate toward the north and toward the east. And he measured from gate to gate in hundred cubits. After that, he brought me toward the south, and behold, a gate toward the south. And he measured the posts thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures. And there were windows in it and in the arches thereof round about like those windows. The length was 50 cubits and the breadth of five and 20 cubits. And there were seven steps to go up to it. And the arches thereof were before them. And it had palm trees and 
They had palm trees, one on his side, one on this side, and another on that side, upon the post thereof. And there was a gate in the inner court toward the south, and he measured from gate to gate toward the south a hundred cubits. And he brought me to the inner court by the south gate, and he measured the south gate according to these measures. And the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, according to these measures, and, the, and there were windows in it. And in the arches thereof round about, it was 50 cubits long and 5 or 20 cubits abroad. 5, 20 cub, five and 20 cubits broad. And the arches round about were 5 and 20 cubits long and 5 cubits broad. And the arches thereof were toward the utter, the utter court, and palm trees were upon the post thereof. And the going up, and the going up, it had eight steps. And he brought me into the inner court toward the east, and he measured the gate according to these measures. And the little chambers thereof, and the posts thereof, and the arches thereof were according to these measures. And there were windows therein, and the arches thereof round about. It was 50 cubits long, and 5 and 20 cubits broad. And the arches thereof were toward the outward court, and palm trees were upon the posts thereof on this side and on that side. And the going up to it had eight steps. And he brought me to the north gate and measured it according to these measures. The little chambers thereof, the posts thereof, and the arches thereof, and the windows to it round about, the length was 50 cubits, and the breadth five and 20 cubits. And the posts thereof were toward, toward the utter court, and palm trees were upon the post thereof on this side and on that side. And the going up to it had eight steps. And the chambers and the entries thereof were by the posts of the gates, where they washed the burnt offering. And in the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two tables on that side to slay thereon the burnt offering and the sin offering and a trespass offering. And at that side, without as one goeth up to the entry of the north gate, were two tables. And on the other side, which was at the porch of the gate, were two tables. Four tables were on this side and four tables on that side. By the side of the gate, eight tables were whereupon they slew their sacrifices. And the four tables were of hoon stone for the burnt offering of a cubit and, and a half long and a cubit and a half broad and one cubit high, whereupon also they laid the instruments wherewith they slew the burnt offering and the sacrifice and within were hooks and a hand broad, excuse me, and hand broad fastened round about and upon the tables was the flesh of the offering and without the inner gate were the chambers of the singers in the inner court which was at the side of the north gate, and their prospect was toward the south, one at the side of the east gate, having the prospect toward the north. And he said unto me, This chamber whose prospect is toward the south is for the priest, the keepers of the charge of the house, and the chamber whose prospect is toward the north is for the priest. The keepers of the charge of the altar, these are the sons of Zadok, among the sons of Levi, which come near to the Lord to minister unto him. So he measured the court a hundred cubits long, and a hundred cubits broad, four square, and the altar that was before the house. And he brought me to the porch of the house and measured each post of the porch, e each post of the porch, five cubits on this side, five cubits on that side. And the breadth of the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length of the porch was 20 cubits and the breadth 11, cub 11 cubits. And he brought me by the steps whereby they went up to it, and there were pillars by the post, one on this side and another on that side. So that's the book of Ezekiel chapter 40 reading. So Ezekiel is now getting this vision and seeing like the heavenly courts and things of that nature. And he's seeing the measurements of it and things of that nature. So Ezekiel is seeing a lot of de detailed um, altars and courts and palm trees. He's seeing all these different things. Okay. Now we will go into the book of Ezekiel chapter 41. All right. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 41. Here we go. Afterward, he brought me to the temple and measured the post six cubits broad on the one side and six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. And the breadth of the door was 10 cubits and the sides of the door were five cubits on the one side and five cubits on the other side. And he measured the length thereof, 40 cubits and the breadth the breadth 20 cubits. Then went he inward and measured the post of the door two cubits and the door six cubits and the breadth of the door seven cubits. So he measured the length thereof 20 cubits and the breadth 20 cubits before the temple. And he said unto me, this is the most holy place. 
after he measured the wall of the house six cubits and the breadth of every side chamber, four cubits round about the house on every side, and the side chambers where they were three, one over another and thirty in order, and they entered into the wall which was of the house for the side chambers round about, that they might have hold, but they had not. They had not hold in the wall of the house. And there was an enlarging and a winding about still upward to the side chambers for the winding about of the house went still upward round about the house. Therefore, the breadth of the house was still upward and so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the mist. I saw also the height of the house round about the foundations of the side chambers were a full breed of six great cubits. The thickness of the wall, which was for the side chamber about without was five cubits. And that which was left was the place of the side chambers that were within. And between the chambers was the wideness of 20 cubits round about the house on every side. And the doors of the side chambers were toward the place that was left, one door toward the north and another door toward the south. And the breadth of that place, of the, pre, of the place that was left, was five cubits round about. Now the building that was before the separate place at the end toward the west was 70 cubits broad. And the wall of the building was five cubits thick round about and the length thereof 90 cubits. So he measured the house and 100 cubits long and a separate place in the building with the walls thereof and 100 cubits long. Also the breadth of the face of the house and of the separate place toward the east up and 100 cubits. And he measured the length of the building over against the separate place which was behind it and the galleries thereof on the one side and on the other side and 100 cubits with the inner temple and the porches of the court. The doorposts and the narrow windows and the galleries round about under three stories over against the door, sealed, sealed with wood round about and from the ground up to the windows, and the windows were covered. To that above the door, even into the inner house, and without, and by all the wall round about within and without by measure. And it was made with cherubims and palm trees. So that a palm tree was between a cherub and a cherub, and every cherub had two faces. Mm. So that the face of man was toward the palm tree on the one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made through all the house round about. From the ground until above the door were cherubims and palm trees made, and on the wall of the temple... The posts of the temple were squared and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other. The altar of wood was three cubits high and the length thereof two cubits and the corners thereof and the length thereof and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, this is the table that is before the Lord. And the, t the temple and the sanctuary had two doors and the doors had two leaves. Two leaves apiece, two turning leaves, two leaves for the one door, and two leaves for the other door. And there were made on them, on the doors of the temple, cherubims and palm trees, like as were made upon the walls. And there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. And there were narrow windows and palm trees on one side and on the other side, on the sides of the porch and upon the side chambers of the house and thick planks. So that's the book of Ezekiel chapter 41 reading. So Ezekiel seeing more of the gates and the sanctuary and the temples and all these different things and cherubims and palm trees and all. So this is a very expressive detail that he's given that he's being shown. All right. Now let's get to the book of Ezekiel chapter 42. All right. The book of Ezekiel chapter 42. Here we go. Then he brought me forth into the utter court the way toward the north and he brought me into the chamber that was over against a separate place and which was before the boat the building toward the north before the length of 100 cubits was the north door and the breadth was 50 cubits over against the 20 cubits which were for the inner court and over against the pavement which was for the other court was gallery against gallery in three stories and before the chamber was a walk of 10 cubits breadth inward a way of one cubit and their doors toward the north now the upper chambers were shorter, for the galleries were higher than these, the, than the lower, and then the, and then the middlemost of the building, for they were in three stories, but had not pillars as the pillars of the courts. Therefore, the building was straightened more than the lowest and the middlemost from the ground. And the wall that was without over against the chambers toward the 
utter court on the four part of the chambers, the length thereof was fifty cubits. For the length of the chambers that were in the utter court was fifty cubits, and lo and behold, the temple were an hundred cubits, and, and from under these chambers was the entry on the east side, as one goeth unto them from the up, utter court. The chambers were in the thickness of the wall of the court toward the east, over against a separate place, and over against the building. And the way before them was like the appearance of the chambers which were toward the north, as long as they, and as broad as they. And all their goings out were both according to their fashions and according to their doors. And according to the doors of the chambers that were toward the south was a door in the head of the way, even the way directly before the wall toward the east, as one entereth into them. Then said he unto me, The north chambers and the south chambers, which are before the separate place, they be holy chambers, where are the where the priests that reproach unto the Lord shall eat the most holy things. There shall there shall they lay the most holy things, and the meat offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering for the place is holy. When the priests enter therein, then shall they not go out of thy holy place into the utter court. But there they shall lay their garments wherein they minister, for they are holy and shall put on other garments and shall approach to those things which are for the people. Now, when he had made an end of measuring the inner house, he brought me forth toward the gate whose prospect is toward the east and measured it round about. He measured the east side with the measuring reed, 500 reeds with the measuring reed round about. He measured the north side, 500 reeds with the measuring reed round about. He measured the south side, 500 reeds with the measuring reed. He turned about to the west side and measured 500 reeds with the measuring reed. He measured it by four sides. It had a wall round about 500 reeds long and 500 abroad, 500 broad to make a separation between the sanctuary and the profane place. All right, so that's Ezekiel chapter 42 reading. Ezekiel is going more into detail of the measurements and the sanctuary, the temple, the priest, the priesthood and all. Okay, so now we will go into the book of Ezekiel chapter 43. All right, the book of Ezekiel chapter 43. Here we go. Ezekiel 43. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Shabar, 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 and I fell upon my face and the glory of the lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east so the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court and behold the glory of the lord filled the house and i heard him speaking unto me out of the house and the man stood by me and he said unto me son of man the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where i dwell in the midst of the children of israel forever and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places, in their setting of their threshold by my thresholds and their post by my post and the wall between me and them. They have been they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed, wherefore I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put away their whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou, son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house, and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the comings in thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight." that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinances thereof and to do them and do them. This is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain. The whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. And these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. The cubit is a cubit and a hand breadth. Even the bottom shall be a cubit and the breadth a cubit and the border Thereof by the edge thereof round about shall be a span, and this shall be the higher place of the altar. 
And from the bottom upon the ground, even to the lower settle shall be two cubits. And the breadth one cubit, and from the lesser settle, even to the greater settle shall be four cubits, and the breadth one cubit. So the, shall, so the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be twelve cubits long, twelve broad, square in the four squares thereof. And the settle shall be fourteen cubits long and fourteen broad in the four squares thereof and the border about it shall be half a cubit and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about and his stairs shall look toward the east and he said unto me son of man thus said the lord god these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon and thou shalt give to the priest the levites that be of the seed of zadok which approach unto me to minister unto me, set the Lord God a young bullock for a sin offering, and thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the four horns of it, and on the four corners of the settle, and upon the border round about, thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering, and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. And on the second day thou shalt offer a kid of the goats without blemish for a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock. The bullock. When thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And thou shalt offer them before the Lord, and the priest shall cast salt upon them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward, the priest shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, saith the Lord God. So that's the book of Ezekiel chapter 43 reading. And that is God speaking to Ezekiel and, you know, bring him back into remembrance of Zadok and the ministers and the priest and the sin offerings, the burnt offering, stuff like that, uh, sacrificing bulls and uh, things of that nature and keeping it holy, you know, honor of the Lord, you know what I mean? So, and purifying all those things and peace offerings, all right? So that was the book of Ezekiel chapter 43 reading. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 44 reading, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 44. Here we go. Excuse me. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it, therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince. The prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and shall go out by the way of the same. Mm -hmm. Then brought he me by the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell upon my face. And the Lord said unto me, son of man, mark well and behold with thy eyes and hear with thy ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the of the Lord and all the laws thereof and mark well the entering of the house and with every going forth of the sanctuary and thou shalt say to the rebellious even to the house of Israel thus said the Lord O ye house of Israel let it suffice you suffice you of all your abominations and that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary to pollute it even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations, and ye have not kept the charge of my holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus said the Lord God, no stranger or uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Mm. And the Levites that are gone away far from me, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols. They shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary. Having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house, they shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. 
because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall to iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up my hand against them, set the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near to me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all the, that shall be done therein. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them. White, whilst they, while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within, they shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causeth sweat. And when they go forth into the utter court, even into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they ministered, and lay them in the holy chambers, and shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, or a widow that had a priest before. And they shall teach my people the difference between holy and between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments, and they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my assemblies, and they shall hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall come at no dead person to defile themselves, but for father, or for mother, or for son, or for daughter, for brother, or for sister that have had no husband, they may defile themselves." Excuse me. And after he is cleansed, they shall reckon unto him seven days. And in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary, unto the inner court to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offerings unto the Lord God. And it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance, and ye shall give them no possession. In Israel, I am their possession. They shall eat the meat offering and the sin offering. And the trespass offering and every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. And the first of all the first fruits of all things and every oblation of all of every sort of your oblations shall be the priest. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough that he may cause the blessing to rest in the house in thine house. The priest shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself or torn, whether it be fowl or beast. All right, so that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 44, reading. So this is the Lord just speaking to Ezekiel and establishing him more laws of the sanctuary, the house of the Lord, and things of that nature. All right, so it's kind of similar to what God was telling most of the Israelites, all right, and how to live and how to go about the altar and what have you, all right? So that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 44, reading. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, reading, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 45. Here we go. Moreover, when ye shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, ye shall offer an oblation unto the Lord, an holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. Of this there shall be for the sanctuary five hundred in length, with five hundred in breadth, square round about, and fifty cubits round about for the suburbs thereof. And of this measure shalt thou measure the length of five and twenty thousand, and the breadth of ten thousand, and it shall be the sanctuary and the most holy place. The holy portion of the land shall be for the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, which shall come near to minister unto the Lord. And it shall be a place for their houses, and an holy place for the sanctuary. And the five and twenty thousand of length, and the ten thousand breadth shall also the Levites, the ministers of the house, have for themselves. 
for a possession for twenty chambers. And ye shall appoint the possession of the city five thousand abroad, and five and twenty thousand long, over against the oblation of thy of the holy portion. It shall be for the whole house of Israel, and a portion shall be for the picture on the side, on the one side, and on the other side of the oblation of the holy portion and of the possession of the city before the oblation of the holy portion and before the possession of the city from the west side westward and from the east side eastward and the length shall be over against one of the portions from the west border unto the east border and the land shall be his possession in israel and my princes my princes shall no more oppress my people, and the rest of the land shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. Thus saith the Lord God, let us suffice you, let us suffice you, O princes of Israel, move violence and spoil, and execute judgment and justice, take away your exact exactions from my people, saith the Lord God. Ye shall have just balances and a just afar, and a just bath. The afa and the bath shall be of one measure, that the bath may contain the tenth part of an homer of an hammer and the ifa the tenth part of an hammer the measure thereof shall be after the hammer and the shekel shall be 20 garas 20 shekels five and 20 shekels 15 shekels shall be your money money this is the oblation that ye shall offer the sixth part of the ifa of an homer of wheat and ye shall give the sixth part of an ifa of an homer of barley Concerning the ordinance of oil, the bath of oil, ye shall offer the tenth part of a bath out of the corn, which is in Hamar of ten baths, for ten baths are in Hamar, and one lamb out of the flock, out of two hundred, out of the fat pastures of Israel, for a meat offering and for a burnt offering and for peace offerings to make reconciliation, reconciliation for them, said the Lord God. All the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince in Israel. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feast and in the moons and in the, and in the Sabbaths and all solemn, solemn, solemn nights of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God in the first month and the first day of the month. Thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the post of the house and upon the corners of the settle of the altar and upon the post of the gate of the inner court. And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for every one that erreth, that erreth. And for him that is simple, so shall ye reconcile the house. In the first month and the fourteenth day of the month, ye shall have the Passover a feast of seven days, unleavened bread shall be eaten, and upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bullock for a sin offering. And seven days of the feast he shall prepare a burnt offering to the Lord, seven bullocks and seven rams without blemish daily to seven days, and a kid of the goats daily for a sin offering. And he shall prepare a meat offering for an ephah, for a bullock and of an and an afa for a ram, and a hen of oil for an afa. In the, in the seventh month, in the fifteenth day of the month, shall he do like in the feast of the seven days, according to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, and according to the meat offering, and according to the oil. All right, so that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 45, reading. And the Lord is also detailing, expressing the Passover as well, and keeping it as well, and the new moons and the Sabbaths and things of that nature, okay? So now we will go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 46, all right? The book of Ezekiel chapter 46, here we go. Thus saith the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the seventh, on the Sabbath, it shall be opened, and in the day of the new moon, it shall be opened, and the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without, and shall stand by the post of the gate, and the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings, and he shall worship at the threshold of the, of the gate. Then he shall go forth, but the gate shall not be shut until the evening. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbaths and in the new moons. 
and the burnt offering that the prince shall offer unto the Lord. In the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish, and a ram without blemish. And the meat offering shall be in a fire for a ram, and the meat offering for the lambs as he shall be able to give, and a hen of oil to in a fire. And in the day of the new moon it shall be a young bullock without blemish, and six lambs and a ram. They shall be without blemish. And he shall prepare a meat offering of a fa for a bullock, and an ephah for a ram, and for the lambs of corn, as his hand shall attain unto, and an hen of oil to an ephah. And when the prince shall enter, he shall go in by the way of the porch of that gate, and he shall go forth by the way thereof. But when the people of the land shall come before the Lord in the solemn feast, he that entereth in by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. And he that entereth by the way of the south gate shall go out forth by the north gate, shall go forth by the way of the north gate. He shall not return by the way of the gate whereby he came in, but shall go forth over against it. And the prince in the midst of them, when they go in, shall go in, and when they go forth, shall go forth. And in the feast and in the solemn nights, solemnities, solemnities, the meat offering shall be an ephah to a bullock, a bullock and an ephah to a ram, and to the lambs as he is able to give, and an hen of oil to an ephah. Now when the prince shall prepare a voluntary burnt offering or a peace offering to voluntarily unto the Lord, one shall then open him the gate that looketh toward the east, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings, as he did on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go forth after his going forth. One shall shut the gate. Thou shalt daily prepare a burnt offering unto the Lord of a lamb of the first year without blemish. Thou shalt prepare it every morning. And thou shalt prepare a meat offering for it every morning, the sixth part of a fa, and a third part of a hen of oil to temper with the fine flour, a meat offering continually by a perpetual ordinance to the Lord. Thus shall they prepare the lamb and the meat offering and the oil every morning for a continual burnt offering. Thus saith the Lord God, if the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons. It shall be their possession by inheritance. But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants, then it shall be to his, it shall be his to his, to the year of liberty. After it shall return to the prince, but his inheritance shall be his sons for them. Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession, but he shall give his sons inheritance out of his own possession, that my people be not scattered every man from his possession. After he brought me through the entry, which was at the side of the gate into the holy chambers of the priests, which looked toward the north, and behold, there was a place on the two sides westward. Then said he unto me, This is the place where the priests shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering, where they shall bake the meat offering, that they bear them not our into bear them not out into the utter court to sanctify the people. Then he brought me forth into the utter court and caused me to pa pass by the four corners of the court. And behold, in every corner of the court, there was a court. In the four corners of the court, there were courts joined of 40 cubits long and 30 broad. These four corners were of one measure. And there was a row of building round about in them, round about them four, and it was made with boiling places under the rows round about. Excuse me. And then he said unto me, These are the places of them that boil, where the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifice of the people. All right, so that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 46, reading. And it's a continuation of the burnt offerings and peace offerings and um, things of that nature, okay? Now let us go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. All right, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47. Here we go. Afterward, he brought me again into the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then he brought me, he, then he brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto, without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the 
an- ansels, an- ankles. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a, ro- a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, son of man, has thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth with her so ever, the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a great very multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything that everything shall live, whether the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engadi, Engadi, Engadi unto even unto Englaim. In, gl- in a glaim, they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the merry places thereof and the marishes thereof shall not be healed. They shall not be given to salt, and they shall be and they shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on the side, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat. Whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because the waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Thus saith the Lord God, This shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions, and ye shall inherit it one as well as another, concerning the which. I lifted up my hand to give it unto your fathers, and this land shall fall unto your inheritance, and fall unto you for inheritance. All right, and ye shall inherit it one as well as another, concerning that which I lifted up mine hand to give unto your fathers, and this land shall fall unto you for inheritance, and this shall be the border of the land toward the north side from the great sea, the way of Hethlon, as men go to Zadad, Hamath, Baratha, Baratha, Sebraim, which is between the border of Damascus and the border of Hamath, Hazer, Hadakon, which is by the coast of Haran, and the border from the sea shall be Hazar, Haz, Hazaranan, the border of Damascus in the north northward, and the border of Hamath, and this is the north side, and the east side. Ye shall measure from Haran and from Damascus and from Galeed and from the land of Israel by Jordan, from the border unto the east sea, and this is the east side, and the south side southward from Tamar even to the waters of Strife and Kadesh, the river to the great sea, and this is the south side southward. The west side also shall be the great sea from the border, till a man come over against Hamath. This is the west side. So shall ye divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you. And to the strangers that shall join among you, which shall beget children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourneth, there shall ye give him his inheritance, saith the Lord God. So that's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, reading. So I was going more into detail about the rivers and the borders of different, the east, the west, the north, and the south, and the inheritance of the lot of Israel and the 12 tribes of Israel, and how Joseph will have two portions and things of that nature, okay? So that was the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, reading. Now let us get into the book of Ezekiel, chapter 48, all right? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 48. Here we go. Now, these are the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlon. As one goeth to Hamath, Hazaranin, Hazaranan, the border of Damascus northward to the 
coast of Hamath, for these are his sides east and west, a portion for Dan. And by the border of Dan, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Ashur. And by the border of Ashur, from the east side even to the west side, a portion of Naphtali. And by the border of Naphtali, from the east side unto the west side, a portion of Manasseh. And by the border of Manasseh, from the east side unto the west side, a portion of a portion for Ephraim. And by the border of Ephraim, from the east side unto even the west side, a portion of Reuben. And by the border of Reuben, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Judah. And by the border of Judah, from the east side unto the west side, shall be the offering which ye shall offer of five and twenty thousand reeds and breadeth, and in length as one of the other parts from the east side unto the west side, and the sanctuary shall be in the midst of it. The oblation that ye shall offer unto the Lord shall be of five and twenty thousand in length, and of ten thousand in breadeth. And for them, even for the priest, shall be this holy oblation toward the north five and twenty thousand in length, and toward the west ten thousand in breadth. And toward the east ten thousand in breadth, and toward the south five and twenty thousand in length. And the sanctuary of the Lord shall be in the midst thereof. It shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. And this oblation of the land that is offered shall be unto them a thing most holy by the borders of the Levites. And over against the border of the priest, the Levites shall have five and twenty thousand in length, and ten thousand in breadth. All the length shall be five and twenty thousand, and the breadth ten thousand. And they shall not sell of it, neither exchange nor alienate the first fruits of the land, for it is holy unto the Lord. And the five thousand that are left in the breadth over against the five and twenty thousand shall be a profane place for the city, for dwelling and for suburbs, and the city shall be in the midst thereof. And these shall be the measures thereof, the north side, four thousand and five hundred, and the south side, four thousand and five hundred, and on the east side, four thousand and five hundred, and the west side, four thousand and five hundred. And the suburbs of the city shall be toward the north two hundred and fifty, and toward the south two hundred and fifty, and toward the east two hundred and fifty, and toward the west two hundred and fifty. And the residue in length over against the oblation of the holy portion shall be ten thousand eastward and ten thousand westward. And it shall be over against the oblation of the holy portion, and the increase thereof shall be for food unto them that serve the city. And they that serve the city shall serve it out of all the tribes." All the oblation shall be five and twenty thousand by five and twenty thousand. Ye shall offer the holy oblation at four square with the possession of the city. And the residue shall be for the prince on the one side and on the other of the holy oblation and of the possession of the city over against the five and twenty thousand of the oblation toward the east border and westward over against the five and twenty thousand toward the west border over against the portions for the prince. And it shall be in the holy oblation. And the sanctuary of the house shall be in the midst thereof. Moreover, from the possession of the Levites and from the possession of the city, being in the midst of that which is the princes between the border of Judah and the border of Benjamin shall be for the prince. As for the rest of the tribes, from the east side unto the west side, Benjamin shall have a portion. And by the border of Benjamin, from the east side unto the west side, Simeon, shall have a portion. And by the border of Simeon, from the east side to the west side, Issachar, a portion. And by the border of Issachar, from the east side to the west side, Zebulun, a portion. And by the border of Zebulun, from the east side to the west side, Gad, a portion. And by the border of Gad, at the south side, southward, the border shall be even from Tamar unto the waters of Strife and Kadesh, and to the river toward the great sea. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance, and these are their portions, saith the Lord God. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel, three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. And at the east side, 4,500 and three gates, and one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. And at the south side, 4,500 measures, and three gates, one gate of Simeon, one gate of Issachar, one gate of Zebulun. At the west side, 
4,000 and 500 with their three gates, one gate of Gad, one gate of Ashur, one gate of Naphtali. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there. That's the book of Ezekiel chapter 48 reading. All right. A beautiful read right there discussing the lost inheritance, the, the, the directions of the Israelites and their tribes, and which direction shall they depart, shall they be there with their measures, okay? And the Lord set it there and established it. So that is the whole completion of the book of Ezekiel reading. A very awesome read, all right? The book of Isaiah was awesome. The book of Jeremiah was awesome. The book of Ezekiel was awesome. Man, 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 beautiful and just amazing how the Lord used these men to get those words across, man. Very beautiful, man. It's awesome how Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel were obedient too. They were obedient. They didn't uh, they didn't mess up like the way Samson, David, or Solomon did, you know, or the other kingship of Israel. These last pro these true prophets were the only few ones being uh, obedient to the Lord in that time period. So that just shows you how rare a true man of the Most High is, and especially in these times that we're in. There's so much false prophets and false apostles, so much false speakers that people are confused and don't have true discernment on who's who. But the few real ones are still left in these last days, amen. And we will rise up and be restored and we'll be running things, amen, in the name of the Lord. The, Lord, the Lord's hand will be on us and exalt us in these times to really do his will, let our light shine, excuse me, and fulfill prophecy, amen. Yes, yes. So that's the book of Ezekiel reading.